the monomer W polymerizes. So they are saying draw a section of the polymer showing two repeat units. Okay. So let's see what type of polymerization polymerization can take place over here. Now there is already an ester group, but can it form ester uh, ester bonds with others? No, because it does not have any available um, carboxylic acid or available alcohol. So it cannot form th that, and it also doesn't have any amine group, so not an uh, not uh, so not an amide bond as well. So it cannot form uh, form any more ester groups or any amide bonds. So th that means there is no condensation polymerization happening. However, we can see that we have an alkene uh, a carbon carbon double bond over here, which means that addition polymerization can take place. So we will have to uh, carry out this polymerization through addition polymerization. Now let's take this carbon. Let's write it first. So C, this C is attached to, I'm sorry about that. This C is attached to a CN like this. And it is also attached to a CO2 CH3, which is the ester group. And this will be a continuation bond. Then we have to take this carbon, which is the double bonded, which was initially double bonded. It is attached to two hydrogen atoms. So this, so this is one repeat unit, but we have to draw two. So we will just carry out the same thing again. CN, CO2, CH3. And C, H, H. So as you can see, um, we have continued the double bonds on both sides and uh, the CN group is the CN group, the CO2CH3, the CNCO2CH3 and these are two repeat units now of, uh, of this polymer when W polymerizes. Now the second question is name the type of polymerization occurring. So we had already deduced that this was addition polymerization. Now let's erase this and move to the next question. So there's two types of intermolecular forces that, that, that could occur between the superglue polymer and the objects glued together. For each type of intermolecular force, refer to the atoms groups in the superglue in, in, in the superglue polymer involved in the, in the attraction. So now uh, we know that there are no ester and amide group. There, there is an ester group, but not in the polymer chain. It's outside the polymer chain. It is branching from the polymer chain, if you remember. So let me just quickly draw once again the repeat unit of the polymer to see what it has. So this will be CH, H, C, CN, CO2, CST. This is one repeat unit. Now, um, <clears throat> the main chain, it does not have any ester groups. The main chain, the main polymer chain I'm talking about. So the main polymer chain, which is this polymer chain, uh, I have to, I have to make, a, make a draw, draw a larger bracket. So let's go without the bracket and let's just make the continuation bond. So this is the main polymer chain that I've drawn over here. The two carbons in the middle, the, the rest of the, of, the, of the groups are side chains. So there is no ester group in the main chain and there is no amide group in the main chain. So there can be no hydrogen bonds. However, we have the ester group in the side chain and we also have a nitrogen atom or in, because of this nitrile group in the side chain and we know that these are very polar groups. So because they are very polar groups, we will have permanent dipole-dipole interactions. Permanent dipole-dipole attractions and these will be because of the CN groups and because of the CO2 CH3 group, which is the ester group, and or we can just say because of the CO2 group, and then we will have Van der Waals forces because of the main polymer chain, because the main polymer chain is carbon and hydrogen only. So Van der Waals forces, which so permanent dipole dipole is also Van der Waals, so it's wrong to write Van der Waals. We can write IDID forces, which are in instantaneous dipole induced dipole forces. So ID, ID forces. So these ID, ID forces, they will result in, um, they will result because of the 
main polymer chain which is the CH2 group and it can also result because of CH3 so we can also 